cgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use geometry nodes to create a scatter function based on the proximity of another object. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so we're going to build off of what we talked about last week, which is we're going to start by creating just a simple scatter. I'm not going to get too far into that. I'm just going to link to that video in the notes down below. But basically what we've got is we've got this singular object, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subdivide it so that we've actually got geometry in here to work with. So I'm gonna subdivide it like this. We're gonna go ahead and call that good to go. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a quick scattering geometry node setup. And so remember that that's gonna have your distribute points on faces. That's going to have your join geometry so that your original object shows up. It's going to have an instance on points node, and then it's gonna have a collection info node. So collection info is going to reference a collection and it's going to place those objects on the points, right? So in this case, we would right click, we'd create a collection, and we're just gonna call this scattering collection. We would reference that and then whatever objects we put in there, right? Like a UV sphere, for example, are going to get scattered on the surface. Then we can come in here and we can do things like scaling that down. Um, so those aren't placed in here quite as big. You do probably want to apply your rotation and scale. But now we've got our simple scatter in here, right? Well, now we want to do something a little bit different. We only want this to scatter these objects when they're close to another object. And so this is something that's a little bit different than what we've done before. Right, because now what we need to tell this to do is we need to tell this to do something to these objects based on the location of another object. And we're gonna use a little bit of a trick in order to do this. And so first off, what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a sphere. And I'm gonna pull it out of this main collection and I'm just gonna call this proximity sphere. We're gonna go ahead and scale that down a bit. And we're going to apply the rotation and scale. But now within our geometry node setup, what we need to do is we need to reference this. And so in order to do that, we're gonna do the same thing we've done before, where we do a shift A, and we're going to add an object info node right here. And in this case, we wanna use the eyedropper and we wanna sample that proximity sphere. And so we've got this object info in here and it's referencing this proximity sphere right here. Well, now what we need to do is we need to measure its proximity or how close it is. Well, you can do a shift A and you can add a geometry proximity node right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to take our geometry and plug it into the target. And that's gonna find how close things are to this object. Well, now, what we need to do is we wanna use the distance of the objects to this geometry object right here in order to set the scale, right? So all we're really doing is we're saying the closer these are to this object, um, the more we wanna change the scale. But the issue we have right now is first off, notice if I move this around, nothing's happening. That's because we need to make sure inside of our object info that we set our distance to relative. Then what that's going to do is that's going to use the distance to this object in order to set the scale of this object. So what we wanna do now is we wanna add some nodes that are gonna give us a little bit more control over what this does, right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a shift A, we're gonna add a math. We're gonna add a math node in here and we wanna set this not to add, but rather to multiply add. And so what multiply add is going to do is it's going to allow us to adjust a multiplier and then also add a value to that as well. So what that's gonna do, notice how right now, if I move this object around, it's basically scattering those objects um, based on how far away they are from the sphere. Well, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this multiplier and I wanna set it to negative one and I'm gonna bring my add in down to maybe something like this. All right, so now this is getting closer to doing what we want it to do, but we also want to set this where it's kind of randomizing the scale a little bit in here um, when they're close to our object, right? Because this is a little bit more uniform maybe than we want. So we're just going to click in here and we're going to add a random value. So we're going to do a search, we're going to do a shift A, and we're going to look for a random value. We're going to drag this right here, and then we're going to add a math node 
and within our math node, we want to plug that random value into the value right here. But we don't want this to be an add, we want this to be a multiply. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to tell this to randomize the objects near the sphere like this. Okay, and so one thing you might have noticed when we do this though, is at the moment we've got a little bit of a problem. And the problem is if we take our proximity sphere, we move it all the way over here, we start getting some uh, objects being placed on this location. Now that'll go away if you go into your multiply add node and click on the clamp function. So you wanna make sure that you click on clamp. Um, that's going to keep your result in the zero to one range. That way you're not getting that additional stuff added and it's kind of throwing off this whole thing. But now we can take that proximity sphere and we can set it up where it's going to place objects randomly based on their proximity to the sphere. And if you want to adjust this, you can adjust things like the multiplier right here, as well as the add end to set like how far outside of this object this is going to go. Now, one cool thing about this is say that we wanted to place things not on a surface, but rather on a spherical object or a 3D object. What we could do is we could just add a new object. So let's say we wanted to add a new UV sphere. We're gonna add that over here. Um, it placed it in your scattering collection, which is not what you want. But if you wanted to, you could take this geometry nodes modifier and we're just gonna call this sphere. Actually, we're gonna call this prox scatter. Well, you can take that geometry node modifier and you can apply it to this object or you can place it on this object. So we're gonna click on geometry nodes and we're gonna set proximity scatter over here. Now, one thing that you may wanna do is you may want to click on this in order to make it unique so that we're not um, referencing the same data over here. Notice how it made that proximity scatter zero one, but then you could add your own sphere. We could just call this proximity sphere two. Remove that over here, we're gonna scale it down. But within that geometry node setup, you can reference that proximity sphere right here. And you can actually use this to place those objects based on their proximity to this sphere right here. So I can scale this up and down. I can move it around and notice how it's gonna place that on these different surfaces based on the location of that object. And again, you can adjust things like your minimum and maximum scale. You might want more objects on this one. but you can use this in order to create proximity scatter things on surfaces as well. All right, so I'm gonna make this available for download at the cgessentials.com slash geometry nodes. So if you wanna download this example file, you can do it at that link. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.